Thank you, Ashley. Um, well, welcome everyone uh, to Stanford Web Camp and the session uh, where we'll be speaking a bit about the uh, journey of our alumni directory um, and how we transformed it from being uh, multiple instances into one. I see several of you were actually touched this project in some way, so I'm very happy to see you here. And um, as Ashley said, uh, if you guys are wanting to ask questions at any point in time, please feel free to jump in or put them in the chat. I will try to respond to them as much as possible. Uh, however, we will have time at the end for questions as well. Um, and for anybody else who was part of this project to weigh in too, um, because this was definitely not a one person show. It touched many people. Um, so we'll go ahead and dig in. So I'm just gonna, this is what I'm planning to talk about a little bit today. So provide some context about uh, what is the alumni directory at Stanford and uh, why we decided to make some of the decisions we did and take on this transformation, talk about how we did that, and then obviously any lessons learned that we had along the way, um, kind of do a little retrospective there, and as I mentioned, have some time for questions at the end. So to begin with, um, what we for the alumni directory it is um, a, a product that is part of the adapt program here at stanford uh, for those that don't know what the adapt program is it is a multi-year um, project that was taken on to replace a end-of-life platform called postcards that was the underpinning of most the alumni and donor systems here at stanford um, it had been something that had been around for 20 plus years um, and touched many different business parts within uh, the Alumni Association and the Office of Development. So there was a time where we decided we needed to uh, replace that. And uh, with better systems, um, obviously improve those capabilities, increase capacity, um, because we were kind of at the end of postgrad life, unfortunately. We wanted to make sure that we also deepened alumni and donor engagement. Uh, so, you know, create efficiencies where we could and make sure that these products were working for both our, um, our business users and um, external users as well. We uh, also wanted to realize the benefits of that broader enterprise ecosystem. So one of uh, ADAPT's underpinnings um, is that we use the best in breed philosophy and try to use as many um, SaaS products as possible uh, when we can. And sometimes uh, we will do custom products as you'll see, um, but obviously wanted to partner as much with various vendors and people across the university for that. So what is the alumni directory? Why do we have it? Uh, so the alumni directory is a directory where uh, alumni and students can discover their peers, where we want to strengthen their connections both to each other and the university. Uh, it is the official, quote unquote, uh, destination for finding alumni from Stanford. So it does allow other alumni and students to find out who exactly is a alum from Stanford. Uh, this is one of the key selling points for the directory is uh, you can find people across LinkedIn who say they have gone to Stanford in some way, but uh, you never know if that's actually true. And within the alumni directory, you can actually um, find those people and you know that they are actually alumni from Stanford. So that is you know, why uh, the directory was created in the first place. So why did we undertake this transformation? There were many different reasons behind this. Um, and I should also mentioned the we in here is actually a huge partnership that happened with many different um, people across the university, including a strong business partnership with the Alumni Association and also the Office of Development, uh, my program as well, which um, I realized I didn't even introduce myself. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I am Kristen Southard. I am a product manager here at Stanford. I work with business technology services uh, which supports the um, Stanford Alumni Association Office of Development and External Relations. So our department uh, works with that ADAPT program that I spoke to earlier, and uh, we'll be supporting all of these different products moving forward. So the, the we that we are I'm referring to here includes our department, um, the Alumni Association with uh, a couple of people on this call uh, who helped us with this. We also had strong partnerships with um, Stanford Web Services as well. 
as I'll speak to a little bit later, um, as well as many business stakeholders across, this, across the university, including many different schools and units, um, which again, we'll go into a little bit more in depth there. So uh, to go back to uh, the why we undertook this transformation is there are many business objectives within this, those drivers. Um, and so we wanted to really facilitate connections across the university as well as within our alumni community. So we wanted to make sure that we are using those um, best practices that we see in different schools and making sure that everybody is kind of doing, um, hopefully, the best practices there. We also wanted to increase engagement um, with a more modern experience, um, a better user experience, and to really have one central landing spot for everyone to come to. Uh, another huge driver there was to improve that quality and completeness of our alumni data. So uh, we wanted to make sure that we were creating a better user experience so that the external users would actually feel like they want to participate in this platform. As far as technical drivers, which I spoke to a little bit earlier with the ADAPT program, we want to improve that user experience, uh, both with the alumni directory and any adjacent products that uh, I'll kind of speak to a little bit later that um, inform the alumni directory as well as other parts across the um, Alumni Association and Office of Development. We really also wanted to create those efficiencies by centralizing business rules and web pages. I think um, we want to make sure that we can actually support um, all of these different products in a healthy manner. We also wanted to enable quick access to data across the ADAPT ecosphere. So uh, providing a one data source that has um, many APIs that can be tapped into, and that is a way that we could get that data populated faster for the end users as well. So. What I um, so, so what is this transformation that we I'm actually speaking about? So I previewed that we had a lot of different um, instances of this product that were happening across the university, and we wanted we really do want to transform that into one centralized place. So you can see uh, I have two slides here that just show we had six different instances, quote unquote, of the alumni directory, uh, where each one of these different schools or units had a different interface they were logging into. So you can see that there was a different design uh, for each of those. The backend data was all coming from Postgrads and it was um, the actual UI is hosted on, was hosted on PGNet. So the same data structure was there. However, each different unit had a different login experience, a different design, a different user experience. And there were different people who were allowed into each of these instances. So, um, you know, for example, a school of medicine, they had uh, certificate holders. So like postdocs, or sorry, um, uh, interns that could access this, that couldn't see other people across the university. So um, they were each kind of housed in their own central silo here. So you see school of medicine, athletics had a nice design as well, uh, school of engineering. Uh, you also see here, so you have the law school also had their own um, instance GSB and uh, the just the alumni association one as well. What I will say is that um, it also had a a different uh, search experience than you would probably be used to in today's world. Um, we're very used to the Googles and all of the different um, you know kind of machine learning behind it. What we came from was a very basic. Uh, field-driven search. So you can see here, there's, if you can see here, it's very small, um, but there is a field-by-field -field search here. So you can, you would type in, I want to see somebody from who has a law degree, um, and you would put that in there, and it would return results just based on that one field search. So there's no keyword searching per se, you're really searching field-by-field. -field. So what we transformed to uh, was really having one login. Um, so you have everybody across the university, all alumni, all students log in via one login. Uh, you have the ability to um, just keyword search here at the top. You can also use filters along the side. So what you would kind of see with any modern um, search interface, kind of closer probably to an e-commerce site. I think uh, Forrest, who's on this call, one of the things was REI. Um, you know, I think that was something that we were really looking to transform into is having the ability to help people find who they're looking for or just discover um, and making sure that they 
you know, when you land here, you can figure out how to do that. Uh, I will mention that there is this one login is supported by Stanford Pass, uh, which is IDCS. And this is the alumni and donor login for all of the different systems that we have in place that have gone through the ADAPT uh, project as well. So this is uh, using supporting um, uh, products that we have across other systems within this. And so it is uh, something that hopefully our end users are becoming more and more used to. You also see the design is very similar to um, the Storyblock instance that we have on these um, alumni associations home, home site as well. So you'll see a lot of the same, you know, kit of designs that we're using across the SAA and OOD ecosystem as well. Uh, the other thing I mentioned for the other six instances was that they were sometimes only able to search for certain people that say had um, associations with the School of Medicine or law. What we have done with this, we have uh, transformed this to have multiple roles associated with that login. So the user login uh, also provides us uh, an idea of what type of role they should have. So for example, the GSB has some certificate holders that are only able to see GSB alumni. So the moment that they log into the system, they are only shown results um, of people who are associated and they are able to see. So we were able to work with business here to understand what their needs were and be able to work with them to get into one system. So there was a lot of work with our business lead, Leanne, who's also on this call, who will probably speak a little bit later, um, to understand what, what are you looking for? How can we uh, support you in coming to one directory? Because we did have those six directories based on a lot of different business requirements um, and wanted to make sure that we could support them while moving to one system that is easier to maintain for everyone. Um, one of the other things we also did was really look into these taxonomies that you kind of briefly can see over here. Uh, with the industry, um, we wanted to align it to LinkedIn as much as possible because we do realize that LinkedIn is a huge resource for career support as well, based on um, business feedback. And so we wanted to be able to transform a lot of the taxonomies to be of more use for the businesses, or sorry, for business um, and those schools and units and to support their alumni. Uh, to really encourage them to come into the system and to be able to search for each other in a way that feels similar to LinkedIn, but is more customized and specialized to Stanford. Uh, the last thing I'll mention on this one is the search engine behind this. We actually partnered with a vendor called Coveo, which allows for uh, many options for configuring um, different uh, ways to search and also has the option for machine learning um, of really doing that in the future as well. So uh, you can see that we'll do the keyword search. We'll always be continually updating these uh, filters on the side based on what we're hearing from the end users as well. So I'm gonna pause there for two seconds. Was there any questions or anything that anybody had thoughts about before I move on? No, nope. okay. Well, thank you for bearing with me. Well, I forgot to induce myself to begin with. Goodness. Um, so one of the things that I, I really want to make sure that people on this call really understand was the importance of our business. Uh, I think one of the things that has gone very, very well with um, ADAPT and making sure that we are delivering products that will be of use um, and really uh, making sure that we are, you know, providing the best experience is partnering with our business. So we have uh, one, our one fantastic, most wonderful business lead, Fian, who I've mentioned before, who really helped um, helped spearhead this entire project. Um, she was really imperative in trying to collect feedback from different businesses across the university, knowing who to speak to, who to hear, and who to work with to really get everybody on board with going to one uh, platform here. And so I think she... And I guess I should say you, Thean, were really, really critical um, in getting us to this point today. Uh, as I mentioned before, we also worked with uh, 11 different schools and units and 30-ish uh, individual stakeholders across the university provided input um, into our different requirements. So this provided, um, there was a lot of work going into even identifying these people and Thean really helped to identify who those people were 
and how we could actually work with them. So we, throughout this entire process, um, gathered these people for frequent meetings and did email updates throughout the project and were able to inform them of crucial updates, um, asking for their feedback on requirements and really looking to those 30 ish individual stakeholders to be almost evangelists back to their teams so that they could uh, inform their teams about the different changes that would be coming up or if they had they needed to give different feedback. Um, additionally, we um, had kind of a government governance model that went within that. So um, Deanne really did collect all of the, the feedback and kind of worked with our core team, uh, which included both uh, business technology services, the department that I work with, SAA, OOD, um, SWS as well, and uh, really worked for us to be able to put those requirements together. So again, it was definitely a partnership, not a one person show here. So a little bit, I wanna get into a little bit more about how we did this transformation. Um, and I think we had a lot of people with great ideas and great visions. Um, and so what we wanted to do is really get together like a one, you know, a one deck of one slide of what are, what are we looking to do here? Um, and so this is the slide that we came up with, I think towards the beginning, uh, when we started to do all of this research way back in like 2020, I think we were still all at home forever at that point in time. Um, so this is the, the, um, this is the vision that we always came back to. And so all of our decisions, everything we did from here on out, we always came back to the same slide so that we can understand, you know, what, what are we trying to achieve? Uh, which I think really did help as we went through the project and kind of got stuck in the minutia of different, um, you know, requirements and uh, feedback that we got, but having something to come back to really did help us uh, move forward in this project. So as you can see, the the strength and connection of students and alumni by providing trustworthy, relevant, and intuitive interface for discovering peers within the alumni community is really what we were aiming to do. Um, and we wanted to really make sure that we had a product that could evolve with feedback that we would get um, post go live. And I, uh, I should also mention that our go live was at the end of March. So we are right in that right now and still learning about the product and seeing what users are doing. But uh, setting up a structure that we could do that with um, and setting up a team that could handle those type of um, uh, requests that would come in the future. Um, you can see all the different goals here as well. Um, I will also speak. So the directory goals um, that you see on this slide are also really aligned with those of the ADAPT project that I mentioned at the very beginning, that we really wanted to replace uh, the current directory that was on Postgrads uh, really wanted to support that business transformation. Uh, so that providing something that would deepen that engagement with alumni and donor engage, or yeah, deepen that alumni and donor engagement. And then also um, realize the, yeah, the, the benefits, I guess, of a broader ecosystem. So allow many opportunities for the same user to come in in different ways, but feel, have the same logging experience, have the same experience, user experience across many different products that we have within this system. Okay. So a little bit into what our business requirements, where we started with. So we really created some personas or use cases uh, for our business requirements that again, serve the same as that vision that I shared previously, where we could always come back to these personas um, in case we had any questions about you know, where are we going with this particular requirement? To, who, who would benefit from this? And having these personas to come back to really did benefit us as we talked to business as well. I would say when we went out and did our um, business stakeholder meetings, this was very, very helpful for us to be able to um, elicit requirements from them and for them to start thinking um, as their actual end users. Okay. So what did we actually come up with? So. Our final launch product, this is our scope of what we ended up going with. Um, I will say that there were many trade-offs that had to happen to get to this MVP. Uh, so we knew that the decisions that we were making here that we would have to come back and think about what are we going to add in the future. So again, making sure we had things in a state that was 
good enough for a launch where we know that we can continuously prove on um, past that was what we were aiming for here. Um, and again, I think the, the couple things that I want to highlight in here, um, all the plus signs are the new and improved versus what the old system was doing. Uh, we do, we really did want to get to this one Stanford directory um, was our main goal. And so uh, a lot of these other things you see on here, um, like the data and taxonomy and analytics, all of those things really did help to encourage our business, um, our different business stakeholders to come along and want to get on board with our one Stanford directory. Um, the other thing I will mention is that uh, we did have some time about identifying what, what was the right solution? How did we get to Coveo and that custom build working with SWS? Um, and so we did a little bit of evaluation of the different product options that we saw out there that you know were included in a cost evaluation and a vendor evaluation framework, which I'll go into the next couple of slides. But this scope really helped to ground us when we started to go through those evaluations to understand what, what would work, what wouldn't work, and what were the trade-offs if we went with different options there. So um, the vendor evaluation criteria. So um, ADAPT really put together a vendor evaluation criteria that was used across multiple different projects that we had. So luckily for us, directory could just kind of um, use what was already put in place. And these were the five buckets that we continually looked at whenever we were looking at vendors. Um, so that what what does that company like that vendor look like? Um, is this something that they could uh, sustain over a long period of time? Uh, again, that constituent experience that UX um, requirements, you know, do they actually meet the things that we are looking for? Obviously, the business requirements, highly, highly important. <laughs> does it actually, would it actually work for business? Uh, the technical requirements, um, you know, are, are is our data going to be okay? One of the big questions in there. And then, of course, that cost evaluation. So, and then um, to go a little bit into that last bucket. So, when we got down to it, we did, I will mention that we did look at many other resources outside of this, but this is what we came down to in our final approach was um, we had an option of Hybrate, which is currently being used for our groups platform, Stanford Groups. Um, you know, they do, they did have some sort of directory in there. Uh, we also looked at um, doing additional software to the ADAPT ecosystem, which would be, um, I think across campus, you'll see a couple of different instances of People Grove, as well as, um, I always am gonna say this wrong, Readmo, Readmo, um, that is used for Stanford Who right now as well. Uh, or we could go with a custom build. And so you'll see across here, we kind of did the, the, the cost that we'll see across all of this, but when it finally came down to it, what kind of um, really made the decision for us was, um, I'm just going to go back to this scope slide, is the user experience really became down to that, um, that major decision um, point for us. So we had an amazing opportunity um, bartered by, thankfully, our um, amazing uh, Stanford Alumni Association that we were able to work with LinkedIn. And we are one of, I think, one of two directories, if I remember correctly, that actually has a LinkedIn import. And so a user can uh, give access to their actual LinkedIn profile and update a lot of their um, uh, Stanford alumni directory profile with their LinkedIn profile data. And so this was a huge win for us um, to really partner with LinkedIn on that and also be able to um, have, yeah, an easier user experience for everyone, which is what we all want here, because we would like to make sure that we are capturing relevant data and make that as easy as the, for the end user as possible. So those two things between user experience and the LinkedIn import, it really came down to, we really need to do a custom build in order to make sure that our data is captured appropriately, that we are doing everything we can um, to make sure that our users will be happy at the end of the day, um, according to our um, end our business feedback that we got. Um, I would say that when we looked at any other products um, that I mentioned before, so like Hybrate or any of the other ones, um, the other ones really kind of were looking more of like a lateral move um, from PGNet from where we were. And we wanted to make sure that we can improve upon that as opposed to just kind of go side to side there. Um, so that is how we got to that decision to do the custom build and to really work with our uh, partners at SWS, I think fully. So, again, how did we get there? 
we put together a timeline. So we, this is what we're really working for. I will say there was many, many, many meetings and hours done before 2022. Um, but however, this is just one of our latest slides of how we got to actually launch in the end of March of this year. Uh, so we had a lot of um, work done on user experience. So the wireframes with SWS and their UX folks um, to make sure that Again, we were kind of in line with what we have in the ecosystem um, across SAA and OOD and to make sure that you know, people could actually use the profile and that the navigation made sense. Um, and again, working with our uh, stakeholders as well to make sure that they were on board with all of this stuff that we were using. We had constant check-ins with our business stakeholders. You'll see these little triangles down here making sure that we were reporting out um, as much as possible so that we were getting consistent feedback and buy-in across this entire process. Uh, also, additionally, you'll see in here the product capabilities. So this is when we realized we did need to have a, a vendor, in fact, for the search, uh, Coveo, which is what we ended up going with. Um, and so that was that's that middle part right there. Um, I will say, I also want to mention all of these different items in here. Um, it was a truly cross-functional team. So I mentioned SWS. Uh, you also have Coveo, our vendor, which SWS did a lot of work with. Um, I will also say UIT, the enterprise technology team, uh, helped to work on the My Account product, which the My Account product is really the underpinning for all of the data that you see in the alumni directory, as well as many other products. Um, so this was um, the alumni directory was done very much in tandem with the My Account product team as well to make sure that we were aligned on both data and taxonomy, as I mentioned before, the LinkedIn taxonomy updates that we did um, to make sure that we were all hand in hand, we were all, <laughs> all good and that the requirements were being met across the board. Um, and then, of course, our business, um, which included not only um, you know, Thean, SAA, OOD, but really also our SAA marketing team as well to really make sure that we got to the end launch and to make sure that everybody was prepared for that as well. Um, so what you'll see here, this is from our SAA marketing folks, which I just previewed. Uh, this is our actually in current state. This is still happening right now. Uh, because we went live at the end of March, there was a decision to do kind of a soft launch um, where we are really reaching out to those key stakeholders we think will be using this. So those club leaders, community leaders, class volunteers, um, and really reached out to them and encouraged them um, through different email campaigns to get in there, you know, update their profiles, check it out uh, so that we could get some feedback. And you'll see we are currently in the midst right here-ish between um, the kind of going into the general campaign here. So uh, doing some uh, marketing kind of rollout for our external users, you'll see here. Uh, the one thing I'll mention this end part right here, uh, um, the My Account does require, and well, directory really requires a lot of data in order to have efficient search and to make sure that people are getting the most out of the platform. And so there will be a future um, marketing campaign to help with that, as you'll see at the end. The other thing um, that we oops, um, got to was uh, the internal communications. So uh, the SAA marketing team really did um, work on the external communications along with different businesses and uh, sorry, schools and units to do that. But we also did have an internal change management timeline um, that was really spearheaded by our BTS change management lead, Miriam uh, Beekman. So we did a communication out to staff members across the university so that they could understand what was coming, when it was coming, who, where they could ask questions, and what information they would need in order to support the external users. So you'll see here we did quite um, a couple of emails. We did um, I, several different office hours. We also made sure that they understood how to get access if they needed to um, and really continue on um, understanding that feedback, collecting feedback and making sure that people know where to go to ask questions. So that was a lot of talking. Um, I, what I will say is my last points here are just to I've, I want to share what kind of the lessons learned that I saw, um, and I think more of our um, BTS folks saw, and I obviously will want to ask questions for those in the room um, if they have anything to add, but 
I think one of the key things that made this successful was that we had a strong core working team. So that core working team included um, business technology services, BTS, a, a very strong business lead, PN from SAA, um, our SAA, SAA marketing folks. Um, I, we, SWS did so, so, so much work on this um, between coordinating with Covey or a vendor, figuring out who that vendor would be, um, you know, putting the design together, really make, um, having a consistent project manager really did help from SWS. And additionally, UIT of um, putting together that supporting infrastructure in order to um, get the data over to our products as well. So having that strong core working team that met together regularly really did make an impact. And having that business support and leadership um, was crucial uh, in order to make this project work. Um, the other item uh, is I think establishing early buy-in to that vision. Um, so to go back to that vision slide of just having something that really grounds us in what we are trying to do and how to do that, I think really made a difference um, when engaging with campus stakeholders throughout the process. So I think also talking to them regularly, having check-ins with them, whether that emails, um, meetings, uh, I think even just one-on-one -on -one conversations, even with our business lead, uh, I think was critical. I, we would not have gotten to a one directory without that. I, the last two, uh, I think the making decisions and move forward is was pretty important. I think um, making decisions, documenting them so that you can also come back to it and move forward from something really ensured that we were able to um, come to a launch at some point with us. Um, I think it also helps us to ensure that we don't overanalyze things, because I think I do this as a person, <laughs> um, is that, you know, when I am feeling a little bit crunched or stressed, um, I tend to overanalyze things. And so sometimes it is helpful to go back to that documentation that you had of, okay, well, why did we make this decision? And can we stick with that? We should stick with that and move forward. Uh, and then lastly, picking a launch date and sticking to it. Uh, I think going with what you know your scope is for that MVP and knowing that there's going to be trade-offs with that. Uh, I think you will know that this is going to be something that you continually support and that you know that you're going to get feedback and have to adjust with that. But having a launch date so that you have something to go out, I think was critical. Because uh, again, I think we could have gotten into that analysis for a while, but having something where it's we're going live and we're going to handle things um, as they come, I think allowed us to get here and be successful in that. And that is it. That is how uh, we have kind of gotten to this point where we have an alumni directory that is live, that is one, um, and supported with a better search experience for end users. Um, I would actually, if you don't mind, I would love, to, I know we only have a couple minutes left, but Tian, I would love if you wouldn't mind saying a few words um, about your experience with this too, so I, you, as the business lead, it would be helpful. Thanks, Kristen, and thank you for that fantastic overview. I'm seeing so many faces on this call of people who have touched this project. So all I'll say is that this was lifted up by many people and their vision for what is possible. And I think just some of the key things for just listening and listening to the things that were resonant and tapping into everyone's expertise and, and then coming together is really what made this project possible. I think the other thing from a business lead standpoint is my observation is often it's easy to just kind of say we're going to solve the issue for this one department or this one area. And, you know, as a business lead, I, I work with people across campus, both in alumni relations and in careers. And so I'm constantly hearing about the data needs, right? The data is actually at the core of this. The directory is just the instance of how alumni search and discover it. But sort of through this project, we recognize the opportunity to kind of create some synergies along multiple areas, not just directory, but also with data. And so I think just reaching out, establishing relationships with campus partners, understanding what they're doing and trying to align on common business needs is what helps support this project um, and bring it to where it is. So I think just encouraging everybody to always wear that sort of Stanford hat, in addition to what we might see in our day-to-day -day within our department is really helpful. So um, it's, you know, it's been a, a great and exciting project and looking forward to the next phase. Thank you. Yeah.
So that that is all I have for today, but happy to answer any questions for those that um, have any, or we can end early. And we'll stop sharing my screen so I can actually see all of you. Perfect. I might I might jump in, Kristen, Deanne, yes. Shay, congratulations on, on the launch. I know this was a huge effort to, to pull off and involve so many folks, SWS and, and IT perspective. Um, you know, now that you have a few months of, of data, any big surprises in terms of ways that folks are, are using it or that, that you thought folks would use it or, or didn't? And how does that inform, you mentioned this kind of 1.0 release, how does that inform uh, the roadmap going forward in terms of prior to prioritizing features and, and changes? That's a great question. And Theon, feel free to jump in too if you have anything. But I think one of the things that it is, has been surprising, at least for me, is we seem to have two use cases for people coming into the directory right now where uh, one, they really know who they are looking for and they are searching for it by first name, last name, like they they know the person they are looking for and they're very usually very quickly able to find that person. Um, but there is a secondary use case, which, um, you know, in, in saying it out loud, I realize it's like, well, of course, that makes sense, but not something I expected was the discovery, right? Like a really they're not necessarily looking for a person or trying to connect down to one person, but they're just they're just checking it out. And so you'll see a lot of people going through and, um, you know, doing a keyword search and maybe adding some filters or kind of going back and forth. And um, I I think for me, that was just very surprising to see the different the very different use cases that you see there. Um, and then as far as um, next steps. Uh, we definitely have been collecting feedback over, we've been live for about a month-ish now, um, and we are looking to kind of uh, get our backlog in order, trying to um, apply some uh, bugs, fixes, and um, for anything that has risen to the top um, from our business uh, leads and stakeholders, and going forward and trying to um, make those adjustments as much as we possibly can. Dan, did you have anything? I don't I think, I think that's great, Kristen. The one thing I would add is, you know, we came into this with those personas and those use cases. And what I would say is there's not one that's privileged over the other. When we look at the filter facets that are being used, right, it's social class here, it's industry, it's company, it's location. So I think alumni are searching by kind of their multiple attributes, which is, you know, how I affiliate with Stanford, where I live, you know, where I'm working. And so as we think about the evolution of this product, product just continuing to privilege the filter facets that allow them to connect with the affiliations that are relevant to them and, and seeing how those evolve over time. Okay, Alvin, any, um, any connections being made between the individual searching? So I know we have the um, looking for career support, especially like I, I found that fascinating. Like have, have anybody connected the dots? Do you have any success stories there? Oh, Dan, have you heard anything? Um, we haven't really, I mean, I would say the adoption of that filter is, you know, since that's a new field, right? The career support is, you know, we're getting it out there. And I think people are maybe a little bit hesitant initially to populate that field. So I'd say it's it's gaining population and that's going to take time and intention with campaigns. We don't, I haven't heard anecdotally of any backend um, connections that are being made. I'll, I can give an anecdote where we were actually working with our alumni communities team and they're trying to see if we could do, you know, something around the formula one that's coming to Las Vegas. Right. And we were, and we were just as staff going, huh, I wonder if there's an alum affiliated with that. And so, you know, somebody popped onto the directory and popped up a GSB alum. That's like the director of business development and ops for the formula one that's happening in Vegas in, I forgot when the time frame is maybe November. So again, right, it's like that that's a staff connection and a staff use case, not a alum to alum use case, but um, it was great because, you know, because Cobeo is such a robust search, we were able to just draw up that information from the job title and um, and find that instantly. So hopefully our alums are finding that same utility, Shay. Neat, cool, that's awesome. Oh. Cool. Well, I have one more question related to that. Um, 
how do you know what like what types of analytics are you capturing? Are you kind of doing is Coveo providing those analytics in terms of the usage or kind of Google Analytics or like which which layer are you hitting in terms of the um, usage of the site? Great question. So we are hitting all of them. <laughs> so uh, we are definitely doing uh, Google Analytics. We are also Coveo is providing a lot of in, um, like metrics that we are tracking as well. Uh, and then additionally, we do have some data that we need to be, we're pulling from our um, data hub or OBI as well. And so we are doing many different ways to find the metrics that we put in place through our go to market document in the beginning. Um, what I will say, I think a lesson learned for us as well is that our metrics have um, been changing. And I think that is very normal based on going live and then adjusting and seeing how people are using the product and looking at things again. And is that really what we wanna be tracking? Does that mean success to us? And so we are currently right now actually in that phase of trying to figure out what those metrics are that we really want to be tracking week over week to make sure that we are adjusting you know, in real time um, to different use cases that we are seeing. So a combination of all of the above um, and really trying to make sure that we are serving our users as best we possibly can. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah. Well, we are right at time. Ashley, is I, there anything else? One oh. last thing. One oh. last thing. I, uh, uh, first of all, just thank you, Kristen, for this trip down memory lane. That was uh, quite cool. It's been a long road. Uh, and second, you know, you mentioned the importance of uh, various roles along the way. I don't think you said anything about the importance of a, a strong business analyst uh, and eventual product manager. So kudos to you, Kristen. Thank you. Thank yeah, you for being a, a big central role. In this. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. I think it is definitely, again, it is a a group effort, I feel like, to get something like this out the door and to get everybody on board. It is, you need so many different people. Like, yeah, I mean, and Forrest, for your also your great vision in the beginning, like we could not have done this without you either. So thank you all. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, thank you all very much. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording now and I'm good. I'll keep the room, room open as long as you want to stay and chat and anything else. Great. Thank you. Thank you.